The Choanery was a royalist uprising in twelve of the western departements of France, particularly in the provinces of Brittany and Maine, against the French Revolution, the French First Republic, and even, with its headquarters in London rather than France, for a time, under the Empire. It played out in three phases and lasted from the spring of 1794 until 1800. A first uprising attempt was carried out by the Association Breton to defend the French monarchy and reinstate the specific laws and customs of Brittany that had been repealed in 1789. However, the massive uprising of an important part of the West and the transition to counter-revolution was mostly caused by the civil constitution of the clergy and the levee en masse decided by the National Convention. The first confrontations broke out in 1792 and evolved to a peasant revolt, then to guerrilla warfare and eventually to full-scale battles until the Republican victory in 1800. Shorter and less important peasant uprisings which took place in other departements such as in Aviron and Lozera were also qualified as Choanneries. A petite Choanerie broke out in 1815 during the Hundred Days and a final uprising ultimately took place during the Vendine War and Choanerie of 1832. Origins In 1791 the adoption of the civil constitution of the clergy caused the peasants around Vannes to rise in defense of their bishop against the republicans of Lorien who wished him to swear the oath of loyalty to the civil constitution. The following spring, in the area around Quimper, a justice of the peace led several parishes in a rising in the name of King Louis XVI against the local authorities. During the summer of 1792, incidents occurred in the districts of Carre, Lanyon, Pontreau, Cron, Chateau Gontier and Laval, where the peasants opposed a levy of volunteers for the army. At saint wen des trois in the district of Laval, Jean Cotteroux led the insurgents. His nickname probably came from his imitation of the call of the tawny owl for a recognition signal. A reward was put on his head but nevertheless he reached England in March 1793. The Republican administration recognized him and his brother as the leaders of the revolt. Causes The Breton Association Course First phase 1794-1795 In January 1794, the Vendians of the Vendée Militaire, following the setback of the Vire de Galern, tried to resist the infernal columns of General Turo. During this time, groups of Chouins north of the Loire took up arms again in the areas crossed by the Vendines. The Choanery was born on the borders of the Mayenne and of the Ileva line, near Fougères, Vitré and Laval. These small groups led by Jean Chouan, Amy Q. Du Bois Guy and Jean-Louis Estreton, regrouped Chouins and Vendines who survived the Vire de Galern. Leaders who were compromised in the peasant uprisings of March 1793 and even deserters. Condemned to live in almost total secrecy, the Chouans knew that being captured by the Republicans would mean certain death. Most of them were motivated by a desire to avenge their relatives who had disappeared in the Vire de Galern. In guerrilla warfare, Chouans in groups of a few score or a few hundred men ambush military detachments, couriers and stagecoaches carrying government funds. They attacked Republican towns, executed informers, constitutional priests and Republicans, a large number of them administrators. To oppose the Chouans, Republicans built strongholds or fortified towns which were defended by local territorial guards. They were led by General Jean-Antoine Rossignol, chief commander of the Army of the Coasts of Brest. A law enacted on 23 March 1793 mandated that captured insurgents should be executed by firing squad or by guillotine within 24 hours. Rossignol also assembled groups of fake Chuan outlaws in order to do as much as possible to discredit the real Chouans. Murders were carried out throughout the whole war with a varying degree of intensity. For example, in the district of Fougères, in conflict between some 2,000 Chouins and a fluctuating number of Republicans, 219 people were assassinated or executed by Chouins and 300 by Republicans. 
This did not include deaths during fights, summary executions on the battlefield, or executions following the expeditive revolutionary due process of law. The Choanery spread quickly to Brittany and reached the Côte d'Armor, dominated by the Chevalier de Bichard d. On 15 March it reached Morbihan where Joseph de Fay and Bejari assisted by Pierre Guillemot incited a peasant uprising aimed at Vannes. The insurgents were easily counted by the Republicans at the Battle of Mangolarian. However, in the Finisterre in the west of the Côte d'Armor, the Basse Cornaride, the Elia Cuton and the Tregor did not take part in the uprising. Georges Cadoudel and Pierre Matter and Mercier, nicknamed La Vendée, a rescued from the Battle of Savigny, moved to the Morbihan where Boulainvilliers was appointed general-in-chief of the département. However, Boulainvilliers defected to Ilaverline with Moni taken from headquarters. Sebastien de la Haye de Sils succeeded him as general. Boulainvilliers foolishly returned a few months later in the Morbihan. He was captured and shot by Pierre Guillemot's men. Other departments, however, did not stand as united as the Morbihan. In the north of Anjou, Marie-Paul de Scepo de Bois-Guignot was named commander for the north of Maine-et-Loire. His authority later extended to Loire-Atlantique, Mayenne and Sarthe. However, he commanded in name only. As in other departments, his authority as a Chuan chief only extended to his own canton. Joseph de Poissy, a former officer compromised in the Federalist revolts, realized the necessity of centralized command and attempted to assume the function of general-in-chief of the Chouans. Recognized by some chiefs, Poissy embarked from dinner to London on the 11th of September 1794 to meet future King Charles X of France. Major General Pierre Deserteur de Cormerton, his second-in-command, assumed command in his absence. Charles X favoured absolute monarchy and distrusted Poissy, who advocated parliamentary monarchy. However, following the intervention of British Prime Minister William Pitt the Younger, Poissy was appointed General-in-Chief of the Royal and Catholic Army of Brittany on 15 October 1794 with the rank of Lieutenant General. His power thus extended to all the insurgent areas north of the Loire, including the Maine and Anjou, where Skepo appointed him general-in-chief. Roba's pier fell on 28 July 1794. Consequently, the terror ended and the Convention Nationale became more flexible and open to negotiation. The agents royalist de Paris asked the Chouins in the name of Louis XVIII of France to stop fighting. On 26 December, Brigadier General Jean Humbert and Chu and Chief Bichardy met to discuss peace options. While Poissy tried to organize a landing from London, his Lieutenant Cormerton assumed full command and negotiated the Mabelez Peace Treaty in April 1795. He was followed by a minority of local leaders. Of the 121 leaders attending, only 21, including de Sils and Bichardy, signed the treaty. Second phase 1795 to 1796 because neither side had negotiated in good faith. There was an increase in tension following the death of Louis XVII on 8 June. The peace was broken on 26 August 1794 as General Lazare Hoche, who succeeded Jean-Antoine Rossignol as head of the Army of the Coasts of Brest ordered the arrest of those who had refused to sign the Treaty of the Mabelez. Hoche thought that Cormerton was trying to outsmart him. Cormerton was imprisoned. Bichardy, who did not sign, was killed during the night of 17 to 18 June between Brehand and Moncontour. Likewise, de Sils, who had taken up arms again, was attacked on 28 June at Grand Champ by the troops of Adjutant General Josnet. De Sils was killed in action and his men retreated. On 23 June 1795 a British fleet led by Commodore John Borlase Warren landed 3,500 soldiers of the émigré army in Karnak. They joined 15,000 Chouins led by Vincent de Tintaniac, Paul Alexandre Dubois Bertelot and Jacques-Anne Joseph Le Prestre de Vauban. 
great-grandnephew of Marshal Sebastien Leprestre de Vauban. However, disagreements between the general of the émigrés Louis Charles de Villiers and the expedition leader Poissy cost the royalists precious time. A counter-attack by Lazare Hoche forced the Chouins back to the Quibrin Peninsula. On 10 July, two columns of Chuan troops wearing English uniforms embarked on British ships from the peninsula and were landed behind Republican lines. However, the men from the first column, led by Lantavidu Rest and Jean Yan, scattered. The second column, led by Vincent de Tintaniac, seconded by Georges Cadoudal, prepared to attack but received a message from the agents Royalist de Paris requiring them to join a second British landing at Cote d'Armor. Tintaniac hesitated in the face of opposition from Cadoudal, but obeyed the order. He was killed on the way at Coet Logan on 18 the July. They reached the Bay of St. Bria but no British fleet joined them, so they returned to the Morbihan and appointed Cadoudal as their general. During this time, in Quiberin, reinforcements of 2,000 men led by Charles de Virot de Sombroy joined the émigrés. They attempted to attack on 16 July but were crushed. Hoche launched a final assault on 20 July and routed the émigrés. De Villy was fatally wounded, Poissy managed to board a British ship. The Republicans took more than 6,000 prisoners. 748 of them were shot by firing squad, including Sombroy. The day before his execution he wrote a letter to Commodore Warren denouncing the flight of Chief General Joseph de Poissy. This letter had an enormous impact on the Chouans. A council of officers in Morbihan sentenced Poissy to death in absentia. Poissy returned to Brittany in autumn 1795, where he was arrested by Pierre Matter and Mercier and brought before Cadoudal. Poissy defended himself vigorously and found he still had the support of the Count of Artois. Cadoudal and Poissy were eventually reconciled. Guerrilla fighting resumed after the failure of the English royalist expedition and spread to Normandy where Louis de Frotte, freshly landed in France in 1795, organized the uprising. Poissy had suffered some loss of reputation and blamed the Chouans of the Morbihan and their chiefs who, according to him, were hostile towards nobles and wanted to establish equality under a white flag. Poissy left the Morbihan for the Ilave line, where the division chiefs were of the nobility, and joined the Mordals division led by Jean-Joseph Rouault de la Tribonnière. He did not receive much more support than he had in the Morbihan, but remained commander-in-chief thanks to the support of the Count of Artois. Poissy wanted a choannery led by nobles and founded the Company of the Chevaliers Catholiques. Several émigrés joined France to fight with the Chouans, but numerous disputes broke out between them. In January 1796, Poissy joined the Fougère division, the most important one in Ilave line, and appointed as his chief Amy Acute Picket du Bois Guy, chief general of the Ilave line and of the east of the Côte d'Armor. To fight the Chouans, the Republican forces were organized in three armies. The Army of the Coasts of Brest, led by Lazare Hoche, based alternately in Rennes or Vannes, controlled the Finisterre, the Morbihan, the Côte d'Armor, the Ilave Line and the Mayenne. The Army of the West, led by Jean-Baptiste Camille de Canclaux, based in Nantes, controlled the Loire-Atlantique, Le Maine et Loire, the Vendée and the Dechevres. The Army of the Coasts of Cherbourg, led by Jean-Baptiste Annibal Orbit Ubait, based in St. Malo, controlled the Mancha, the Orne, the Calvados, the Sartan part of the Ilave line. In December 1795, the Directoire named Lazare Hoche chief general of all the Republican forces based in the West and gave him full authority. The armies of the west, of the coasts of Brest and of the coasts of Cherbourg were merged to form the ARM IQT des Côtes de l'Oc IQT AN. Despite the Quiberon disaster, the Chouins gained some victories in the coming months. However, Hoche changed tactics in the beginning of 1796. He set up mobile columns, promised amnesty to Chouins who surrendered, guaranteed religious freedom and strove to discipline the army. 
Many Chowans and Vendines were amenable to these measures and laid down their arms. Hoshe's priority was to pacify the Vende. Stofflet was captured and shot by firing squad in Angers on 25 February 1796. Cherit was hunted down, imprisoned on 23 March and shot on 29 March 1796. His death marked the end of the war in the Vendée. Now that the Vendée was pacified, Hoche turned his attention to the Chouans. Faced by large Republican numbers, Chuan chiefs gradually surrendered. Skepo was the first to surrender. On 14 May, Georges Cadoudal signed a peace treaty on 19 June. Louis de Frate refused to sign peace himself. He embarked for England and left his lieutenants to sign on 23 June. Amy Acute Picket du Bois Guy was the last to surrender. On 26 June, Poissy returned to England. Third Phase Chuan Leaders the principal leaders of the insurrection were Georges Cadoudal, his brother Julian, Jean Cotteru, called Jean Chouan, Pierre Guillemot, known as the King of Bignan, Joseph de Poissy, Louis Charles de Sol de Grisolis, Auguste and Sébastien de la Haye de Sils, Jean Louis Treton, nicknamed Jean d'Argent, Tristan Lamit, Michel Jacquet, known as Typher, Joseph Just Cockeroo, Amelia Q. Du Bois Guy, Bishop D. Pierre Matter and Mercier and Bonfils de Saint Loup. In Brittany, the Chouans were supported by many nobles. Charles Armand Tuffin, Marquis de la Rue the Chevalier de Bichardy, Count Louis of Ross Morduc, the Pickett brothers of Bois Guy, as well as by commoners. In Lower Normandy, Count Louis de Frotter had a dominant role. One of the lieutenants in Lower Maine was Guillaume Le Metaire, who was nicknamed Rochambeau. In the Vendée, the nobility were not able to play their normal military role. There was never any properly organized army, it consisted mostly of small elusive bands. The Chuan leaders were, above all, peasant farmers. In contrast to the earlier war in the Vendée of 1793, the Choanery did not possess any territory. The cities and many towns having remained republican, but some districts did rise in open revolt. There was also the Petite Vendée in Lower Maine, controlled by the Prince of Talmont. The Choanery was very difficult to suppress as its fighting forces had not been beaten in the battles of the Vendée War. It had many leaders and its army units were small and dispersed. Typology of the Choans Historiographic novelistic This rebellion is featured in the novel Les Choans by Honoré de Balzac and The Man in Grey, a collection of short stories about the Choans by Baroness Auxy. It is also depicted in paintings and popular imagery. Bibliography Historical Jacques Dutch Amendez Sapo, Souvenirs de la Choanerie, 1855, Emile Souvester, Scenes de la Choanerie, Michel Elie Acute V.Y. Paris, 1856, Abbe Jean Francois Paul Oan, La Choanerie du Main Eight Pays Adjacents. 1793-1799-1815-1832. Avec la biographie de plus de 120 officiers, Manoia, Le Mans, 1875. Jean Morvan, Les Chouans de la Mayenne, 1792-1796, Elia Cute V.Y. Paris, 1900, Abbé Almeyer Bellon, La Révolution dans le Maine, Revue Bimestriel, Imprimerie Benderit Puyem, Villers, Le Mans, 1925-1937, Marc Vallon, Chouans de la Mayenne, Editions Siloé, Laval, 1985, Jean Barrow, La Choanerie Mayonnaise sous la Convention et le Directoire, Imp. Martin, Le Mans, 1988. Ambonette, Les Grands Hures de la Choanerie, Perard, 1993. Roger Dupuis, Les Chouans, Hachette Literature, 1997.
Anne Burnett, Histoire Générale de l'Archo Annery, Perard, 2000, Jean Lepart, Histoire de l'Archo Annery dans la Art, In Revue Historique Archéologique du Maine, Le Mans, Tome CLIII, 13-64, 2002 and Tome CLV, P65-120, 2004. Hubert Lamal, Dictionnaire des Chouans de la Mayenne, Editions Regionales de l'Ouest, Mayenne, 2005. Bernard Coquette, Le Dernier des Chouans Louis Stanislas Sortant, 1777-1840, Editions au Fris SPM, Paris, 2007. Works of Fiction Honoré de Balzac, Les Chouins à la Britannia and 1799, La Comédie Humaine, Tome 13, Victor Hugo, Quatrevinck Tries, Jules Barbet de Orville, Le Rinsorcelle, and Le Chevalier des Touches, Michel Ragan, Les Mouchoirs Rouges de Cholet, the film Chowans, by Philippe de Broca, with Philippe Norit, Sophie Marceau, Lambert Wilson and Stéphane Fryce, 1988. D.K. Broster, The Yellow Poppy, published by Duckworth, 1920.